Throwing a quadrat over your shoulder is not random. Let's talk about it and 26 other big mistakes that you don't want to make in GCC Biology Paper 2. There are only two required practicals in GCC Biology Paper 2 if you're taking combined science. So memorising methods for those has got to be part of your revision this weekend. But if you're talking about random sampling, that doesn't just mean taking a quadrat and throwing it over your shoulder. You need to talk about using two tape measures to make a grid, and then either using a random number generator to select the quadrats, or rolling a pair of D10s to give you coordinates. Thing number two, make sure you're not mixing up a receptor and a stimulus. Receptors are cells and the stimulus is what they're detecting. Number three, we all know that homeostasis is about keeping the internal conditions the same, but you need to also include in your definition that this is to allow optimum function for the enzymes and things inside the cells, and that it's in response to internal and external change. Speaking of required practicals, the ruler drop test is not testing your reflexes, because reflexes don't use the conscious part of your brain, and deciding to grab a ruler is definitely conscious. And when you're doing that ruler drop test, you can't count down. If you're taking triple, then make sure that when you're talking about the eye, you don't mix up accommodation, which is near versus far, and adaptation, which is about light versus dark. Number seven, one of your body's responses to too high of a temperature is to sweat more, not just to sweat, because you're sweating a tiny bit the entire time. Glucagon and glycogen. There are very few words in GCC science that you need to spell perfectly, but these are two of them. Glucagon is a hormone made by your pancreas to help control your blood sugar. And when you release glucagon, your body breaks down glycogen, which is the big polymer made from glucose, to release more glucose and raise your blood sugar. Number nine, water leaves your body through sweating, through you breathing it out and through urination. But the only one of those that you actually can control is urination. The amount that you sweat has nothing to do with how well hydrated you are, it's to do with how warm you are. When it comes to genetics, genes are much smaller than chromosomes. In humans, there's about a thousand genes per chromosome. And number 12, a mutation is a change in the DNA, not just a change in the cell. Speaking of mutations, they are crucial for natural selection because it can't act if we haven't got any variation to start with. Number 14, the vast majority of mutations don't actually affect the protein structure and therefore they don't affect the phenotype. We've all heard dominant and recessive explained in terms of the stronger allele, but you need to actually be able to give proper definitions. A dominant allele is always expressed, even if there's only one copy, even in the heterozygote. Whereas a recessive allele is only expressed in a homozygote when there are two copies. Number 16. If you're asked to draw a Punnett square, there's probably going to be something else you need to do after the Punnett square. So that could be giving the final probability of a certain child being born, or labelling all the offspring with a certain phenotype. And on a related note, number 17, make sure that when you're reporting those probabilities, you understand whether you're meant to be doing it as a fraction or a ratio. So the fraction 1 out of 4 is equivalent to the ratio 1, 2, 3. Evolution by natural selection is something that takes place over many generations, with a particular trait becoming more common every generation, until it's fixed in the population and all individuals have. It's not about individuals changing their behaviour in order to fit in better. Number 20. For classification, remember, keep purple cats off Farmer Giles' shed. Kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species. And the last two of those put together give you the binomial name. Biotic factors are living factors like predators and mates and competitors, whereas abiotic factors are non-living things like light intensity and pH and water availability. 22. Species may go extinct as a result of a new competitor or a new predator or a new disease. Just predation or competition on its own isn't going to send them extinct. Number 23. Decay takes place because of microorganisms like bacteria and fungi. So you can prevent it by killing off those microorganisms with a lack of oxygen or extremes of pH or extremes of temperature. 24. The ozone layer has nothing to do with climate change. In fact, the ozone layer isn't even mentioned in GCC science. And while they're related, climate change and global warming are not the same thing. Climate change tells you it's changing, but it doesn't give you the direction. Whereas global warming implies average rising temperatures leading to ice caps melting and flooding and extreme weather events and the destruction of polar habitats and the extinction of Arctic animals. Note polar and Arctic, not just habitat destruction and extinction. Number 26. It's never enough to just say in a method that you're going to repeat things. You're going to repeat the experiment, discard anomalous data and calculate a mean. In the decay required practical, assuming you're taking triple, you're trying to compare the rate of decay. And you can't work out a rate without a time. 
So you need to time how long it takes for either the indicator to change colour or your pH probe to give you a sufficiently low value. So if you can avoid all 27 of those and remember to write in black ink and stay inside the box, I think you'll be good.